on behalf of the Indian Academy of Sciences, I have great pleasure in welcoming you all to the 28th media meeting of the Academy. Very good morning. Uh, at the outset, I would li like to thank the organizers and Team Indian Academy of Sciences for giving me this opportunity to share some of our findings on this particular area of research. Uh, really, it is a fascinating area. A uh, lot of work has been done, and many, many people are working on this particular area, especially in the area of nanomaterials and nanomaterials and biomaterial interface, it's really a challenging one. Uh, we, have, we have started uh, about 10 years back on this particular topic. Uh, we started looking at the interactions of large biomolecules as well as the smaller uh, biological peptides uh, and their interactions with the carbon nanomaterials. Basically, we looked at various aspects of the nanomaterials as well as the bio uh, partners, and then we tried to derive some interesting results. This is the one which really kindled the nanomaterials area, that's a fullerene, and the, these, three team, these three members got the Nobel Prize. After that, Professor Ijima invented the carbon tube, and then you can think of various kinds of tubes, and then some are metallic, some are semiconductors, and, and, uh, and these tubes have been envisaged with various uh, uh, applications, especially in biology, and this can be used as a catalyst, this can store biomolecules, and this can, can be used for the drug delivery and so on. Therefore, there is a lot of applications. Therefore, the interface between these two is really interesting. As I said, that you, you can have three kinds of uh, tubes, zigzag, armature, or chiral. Uh, these two are metallic, and this is a semiconducting one. Subsequently, this, this really uh, fascinated the the, the whole gamut of research in the area of uh, nanomaterials, the graphene. And this is a very fascinating material. It has a Dirac point and Dirac cone kind of electronic structural features. And this, this, the, these two gentlemen got the Nobel Prize for their famous uh, scotch tape experiment. Then the analogous of these are the uh, boron nitrate sheets. You can have a, a nano sheet, you can have a nano ribbons, you can have a fullerene kind of a structure, you can have a nanotube and so on. Therefore, how these analogs interact with the biomolecules, it's a very interesting one. This is the one, uh, is the starting point for uh, our research actually. This is done by Ijima in the year 2006, uh, after the, uh, the invention of uh, carbon nanotube in 1991. He started to look at the, uh, because this is a super hydrophobic material, uh, when you put it in an aqueous environment, it agglomerates, it bundles, and therefore it is not useful for any applications. Therefore, there are several strategies have been envisaged and then tried for dispersing this carbon nanotube. One of the approaches is the using uh, proteins. He, he took an AT protein and sonicated it, and this becomes partially unfolded one. You leave it for some time, it re refolds, therefore there is the folding back to the native state is possible. Now you take a single wall carbon nanotube, in, in, interact with the unfolded one, then it is not for going back to the original state, that is, it is not taking the native state. That means in biology it is a very, very important one. Sequence determines the structure and structure determines the function, therefore the function is last. This has been demonstrated by a variety of experiments. Uh, for example, uh, the enzymes have been loaded onto the carbon nanotube and then they have looked at the catalytic properties of this biocatalytic experiments have been done. Then it has been shown that, uh, that the, those enzymes are not having activity. Therefore, they, they looked at the reasons for that. Then they found that only the helical structures are uh, uh, disturbed by the presence of these kind of materials. Therefore, at this time, we started our research on this particular area and we want to Unravel, what is the reason for that? What is the structural basis for this kind of interaction? 
This is the approach, actually, you know, I'm really fascinated by the work of Professor Balram. And he used to take this, this is a protein, and then he deconstructed this into various motors and tried to do a lot of synthesis. Uh, uh, he designed several peptides. I, I thought that I will adopt a similar strategy before looking into the whole protein as the interacting with the uh, carbon uh, materials. Therefore, I took only the helical structure and sheet and so on. Uh, I, I took all these uh, secondary structure element, and then later on I combined with the protein. So this is the idea here. We, we first started with the interaction of alpha helical model peptides with a single walled carbon nanotube. We started that. Uh, the questions that we have addressed are this. How do they interact? Uh, and what, uh, what kind of uh, force fields that we can use uh, to get the reliable uh, information from that? And what is the length of the peptide? How does that influence the interaction between these two and so on? These are the question, fundamental questions we ask from this. So this is a classical molecular dynamic simulation based uh, uh, approach here. And then these are the details, I'm not spending uh, time on that. But we have taken several model systems, but we, we have uh, taken polyalanine, which has the highest propensity for forming alpha helical structure. That we have taken as the model one, and then we started interacting. So this is the alpha helical uh, uh, peptide, and then we simulated using this particular force field, FF03, and then we have a, there is not much of change in the structure, it exhibits the helical structure. The same thing was uh, we tried with the, some of the force field, but still there is a helical structure, but the elicit is last at some points, but more or less it, it exhibits a helical structure. Then we started uh, interacting this with the carbon uh, uh, tube, and you can see that the, the helical peptide starts wrapping, and you can very clearly see that the helical stability is basically governed by the intramolecular hydrogen bonded interactions, that is, I the residue hydrogen bonds with the I plus 4 residue in the alpha helix. Those kinds of interactions are lost when they start interacting with this. So this is with respect to the other force field. Again, you get the similar kind of a wrapping kind of interaction is the one which facilitates this interaction between these two. And we change the orientation, that's a question asked by the referee. Then we change the orientation, we tried several orientations, several samples, and in most, in all the cases, it is only the wrapping kind of a interaction that is taking place between these two. Then we quantified the helicity of the helix, and you can see that from one, it uh, really it, uh, decreases to, let's say, 0.6. Uh, the, therefore, the helicity is completely uh, lost in these kinds of system. And then the helicity is basically governed by the hydrogen bonding interaction, as I said. These number of hydrogen bonds are really decreases. In the case of a PA40 with a 40 residue alanine peptide, you can, you can have about 35 as a maximum number of hydrogen bond, and you can see that it completely decreases and reaches about 15, something like that. Therefore, this change in the hydrogen bonding interaction really uh, changes the helicity. Uh, this happens because of the interaction between the carbon nanomaterials and the uh, helix. What are the energetics of the interactions? You can see that the electrostatic force uh, really decreases, and the dispersive interaction, non-bonded interaction, non-covalent interaction between these two, the Leonard Jones basically, that kind of interaction increases. That is the one which really facilitates the interaction between these two systems. Then uh, when we submitted this for the publication, uh, the referee asked that this is a hypothetical system, can you have some other system uh, some other helical system which is derived from the any uh, proteins. Therefore, we looked at, at the several proteins and we took a, a protein, a very, very long uh, uh, the protein called SNARE. From that, we took a helical model. Uh, that model also, you can see that it wraps, but wherever there is a helicity uh, is less, that is, that there, wherever the amino acid has the propensity for the uh, less for the helical formation, therefore those regions are really disturbed by the presence of these carbon materials. So this is the kind of interaction that you can see that uh, it is an infinitely long tube and you can see that it traps onto the tube. Once it traps, it remains there. This is a starting point and you can see that there is an elongation of the helix taking place and then uh, the hydrogen bonding last taking place and then interaction proceeds. So these are some of the observations that we derived when we took this particular uh, peptide and interacted with the carbon tube. Later on, we uh, looked at what is the role of curvature of these nanomaterials. How does that influence the interaction process? So far that we have taken various uh, carbon tube uh, of radii, and then we interacted with the same uh, helical peptide. And you can see that as the interaction increases, the flatness of the uh, sheet uh, flatness of the tube increases, and you can see that 
they, they, they very significantly disturb the helical structure. And finally, the graphene, uh, there's a graphene one, and you can see that that completely uh, destroys the hel uh, helical structure. Then we asked, what is the role of the length of uh, peptides? In biology, you will see uh, very, very short peptide to very large, uh, uh, long helical peptides. How do they interact with the carbon nanotube? That's a question we asked. Then we started with the 10 residue peptide and then up to 80. And you can see that the shorter peptides are not disturbed by the presence of a carbon uh, tube here, but the longer ones are really disturbed by the presence of tube. Therefore, it's a very interesting fish, interesting result. Generally, the longer uh, peptides are very stable because of the hydrogen bonding interaction, and shorter ones have less uh, hydrogen bonded interaction. Therefore, they, they are less stable. But here, the results are very, very interesting. The other way about it is the shorter releases are not disturbed by the presence of these material. The longer ones are disturbed. Basically, the, the contact area is the one which plays a very, very important role here. Then we uh, took the uh, large bundles. If you take a single helix, they are really disturbed by the presence of these tubes or sheets. But if you take a bundle, supercoils, these supercoils are not disturbed by the presence of these uh, tubes or sheets and so on. Therefore, this gave us a very interesting result. The globular proteins, they are disturbed by the presence of the carbon uh, materials, but uh, the membrane proteins or the bundles of helical structures are not affected by the presence of these um, motifs. The next question that we address in this particular area is, um, how these are affecting the folding of the peptides? That's a question we asked in our group. It's really a very large simulation, actually. Uh, we simulated for several uh, microseconds. And we adopted a replica exchange molecular dynamics technique. This is a sampling technique, enables to cross the barriers uh, where you have uh, several local minima. I don't want to go into the theory here. But we adopted this particular technique and looked at uh, how these uh, peptides are folding in the presence of the carbon material. You can see that this is the alpha helix uh, without any substrate. It folds. Uh, there is no issue about that. But when, when, when you put the carbon tube, uh, then the folding is disrupted. You can see that here. It's really a very interesting result. Uh, you can see that there is the helix formation takes place, but it is not completely folding. And you can see that it is not at all folding here. Therefore, it's only nucleation takes place, no folding, and so on. Therefore, the presence of the uh, tube or graphene, it is graphene is still worse, and it is not at all folding. Therefore, the graphene also uh, 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 decelerates the uh, folding process here. The next question is, we deconstruct the protein into various motives. This has a helix, this has a turn, and so on. And this is a sheet. We uh, deconstructed this particular protein into uh, various motives, as well as we looked at how this entire proton is interacted with graphene. That's a question we asked in our group. And we simulated for about 200 nanoseconds. And uh, we, we could able to see that this particular helix is significantly disturbed by the presence of the uh, graphene. And uh, others are not going to any changes here. The sheets are not disturbed by the presence of these materials. Only the helical structures are disturbed by this. Uh, beta structure is retained. Helical structure is last. Uh, so this is also another one. Then we change the substrate. What is the role of uh, boron nitrate? Because it is the electrostatic surface of the boron nitrate is entirely different from the graphene. Therefore, we lo looked at that also here. Uh, this is the boron tubes. And then we interacted with the alpha helical peptides. And you can see that this also significantly disturbs the helical structure very, very significantly. Uh, in this case, it loses almost the, all the helicity of the pep peptide. And here also you can see that the graphene significantly disturbs the helical structure. And we not only on the surface of the nanomaterial we put, it is uh, loaded inside. And what will happen? It, it also depends on the radi uh, radius of the tube. If the tube is, radius of the tube is large, the, there is a significant changes in the helical structure. You can see that there is, the helicity is large. Therefore, these are very, very interesting questions. We ask, what is the role of water here? And you can see that uh, the water is, dis when you, this, you have a water layer here, uh, surrounded by the peptide as well as in the uh, BN sheet. These water molecules are displayed. Some water molecules are trapped. 
these trapped molecules really uh, facilitates the interaction process and it, that, that is the one which is responsible for the changes in the conformations. Then we uh, looked at with various other kinds of uh, peptides, this is called ambophilic peptide which has been designed for dispersing the carbon nanotube and we interacted that and these peptides have what are called the uh, phenylalanine groups which are really uh, uh, able to stack with these kinds of surfaces. Therefore, what is the role of pi pi stacking in disturbing these helical structures? That's what we analyzed very critically and you can see that the completely the helical structure is last here. And I, I don't want to go into the detail here, in these two videos are not working. And here we put the tube, uh, in the inside the tube we put the helical peptide and also a small proteins and we simulated here and the structure is significantly last. Therefore, we could able to show from this investigation how a, a protein interact with the carbon nanomaterials and BN sheets and we could able to show that uh, for the experimentalists that helical structures are significantly altered by the presence of these uh, nanomaterials. The other component, other secondary structural components like uh, sheets are not affected, turns are not affected. But we could able to see very interesting uh, phenomena that helix transition takes place. The alpha helix uh, takes the uh, beta, I'm sorry, alpha helix takes the 310 helix, 310 helix convert into pi 10 helix, such a kind of a transformations are possible. We could able to predict all those things from the large simulation that we have carried out. Future plan, uh, we, there are a lot of work in this particular area going on interacting various kinds of nanomaterials with the uh, DNA, RNA and so on uh, with the gold nanoparticles or silver nanoparticles and so on. We are trying to load these uh, onto the graphene and put the protein onto that. How do they uh, interact? Because these are some experiments. Some experiments have been done in IIT Madras. So we want to interact with them and then we are doing some work in collaboration with the Professor Pratip on this particular area. Uh, I would like to thank my teachers and mentors for the support and encouragement, Dr. Ram Swami, Professor Satyamuti, Professor Chatraj, Professor Gadre, uh, I think both are in the audience, Professor Ghosh and Professor Jamis and other mentors in the audience. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you once again.